The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, October the 19th. Remember, October the 19th was the day in 1987. <clears throat> That was that Monday, that morning of the crash, down 506 points. Uh, anyway, that was a little bit of history there. We're down 30 points today at 33,630. Isn't that interesting? You could take, um, so the Dow, if I remember correctly, was at 20, 20, 237 or something like that. Um, 2,200. And now it's at 33,600. All right, well, we get, you know, things happen. Uh, we're down 35 points right now, 33,600. This is what I was talking about when I did the update. Look, here's the arch formation. Now, I don't know if I can find it. I should have been prepared for it, but I was seeing other things. And so I'm going to try to get to it right now. And there it is. Now, how do I drag it across? Yeah, I'm gonna, don't mess things up. No, don't do that. I'll just talk about it. So I have a pattern that I call the lowercase h. In other words, the price comes sharply down. You can see it here. Look, there's an h pattern. See the arch formation? Takes out the left side low. Well, we've got a second arch formation. And the nine-period moving average, which went positive for a couple of days, went negative at the close yesterday, negative today. And uh, that's the daily chart. The weekly chart, the nine-period moving average has been negative for a couple of weeks now. I'm... I'm a little concerned about that for a number of reasons. Let me explain what it is. This is that acceleration to the downside that occurs once we start the rollover. So we're now down 66 points, and we've still got the Fed to, to talk today. So the Fed, what can the Fed say? The Fed can't say all that much. They can pretty much stay in the same trajectory, but some of the looking out factors might be a little bit different. Uh, but... Essentially, I think they have to stay put. Now, this is a very interesting aspect to the chart. Let's go through them one at a time before I get to the bonds. The S&P is down. It was up a little bit, but now the S&P is, did I type it in the wrong place? Probably did, SP, X, there it is. Now, the S&P, the 9 pin moving average, which was positive for a couple of days, went back to negative. You've got the rollover, and now it's down to at 43.13. Um, the big question is, it did make a peak C, but when you go in the Chapman methodology, the quicker and the, the least high, what do we say? If each leg up after a peak A or a B or a C is just modestly higher, but you make a couple in succession, You've got to be careful because that's saying the upside energy um, is dissipating. You really want really strong legs. I can see here, look at that, leg, leg A and then a very strong leg B. And then it failed, but at least it was very strong. In this case, it, they were kind of weakish. Peak A and then just a, less than a dollar higher goes to B, pulls back very modestly for two sessions. The third session goes to a leg C, and what does it do? It just goes modestly high, and then you have that sharp pullback yesterday. And you see the MACD, the moving average is good. The stochastics weak at 75, not very weak, but weak at 75%. On balance, volume has been tumbling. That's the volume itself. Now this is going to be very interesting. Why? Because I can move this over and say that that cup formation is starting to be uh, challenged by the arch formation. In other words, we're always looking at straight line up or down, arch formations or cup formations. The arch could be um, an inverted V or the, v, uh, the cup could be a V-shaped pattern, but basically you're going from one point up and then back down again. So the big question is, coming to Friday in the S&P, the nine period moving average weekly is still weak. It's negative. The daily chart is just arched over and we make it as simple as possible. 
If there is a push below 40 in, into the 4290s, and we're at 4317 right now, that says there's a chance that we're making that arch. Remember, the reason why we went long <clears throat> on a short-term basis, the Dow with an aggressive three times long position, a smallish position, but a long, nevertheless, and aggressively long, is because I am anticipating that this is a bounce and that there has to be some kind of a retest of at least the 200 period moving average right here that's at 42.74 for the S&P. For the Dow, the retest would be at least somewhere in the below that candle right there. That's the candle of the 12th, which would be 33.455. The QQQ now up $1.39 at 364, holding quite well. The nine period moving average is still green. That's good. But if the, if the QQQ, NDX 100, Invesco QQQ Trust Series starts to trade below, and I have to give it a little room, 360.150. And here we are at 364.70. So that's a, that's, that's a very sharp pullback. But if it does that, that's going to be pretty negative. We were long now. We, we're actually out of that position. Took a, a very nice gain, small, a very a small bit off, and then we got stopped stopped out yesterday. Very small gain, um, and I'm watching this closely. And you can see the weekly charts still holding really well. And I'll have to go through this is kind of the stuff I do on Technical Friday. I need to do it today in preparation for tomorrow because anything can happen with Fed speak coming up today. Now, if you go to the IWM, which has been very weak, uh, sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly. Um, wow, look at this H to M, lowercase H to lowercase M to a second arch formation in the, in the monthly chart. Eventually, this could turn into a midpoint to the downside. I don't even want to talk about that, but the Russell 2000 is just looking very poor. I wanted to get out of that as quickly as possible because I want to show you a couple of things. In the bonds, bonds down a half a point at 108.26. And, and uh, 108 and 26 30 seconds. This is going to be very important. And the reason why I was saying before in the in the stock market update at uh, 10 o'clock update for TFNN, 1098 and 830 seconds was a low back in August of 2013. There is a price time match which comes in to either this month or next month. That is October or November right at this 109 and 830 second area. However, and this is a continuous contract, so that price could change. I don't like putting prices in here because they get smoothed out and then I have to change, but nothing else changes. The pattern is exactly the same. The notation of the Chapman wave is not exactly the same, but the low has been 108 and 730 seconds. So we've taken out that left side low, but this is still the candle of the month. Now look at the way you see the way the MACD, the green nine period differential, can deflect from the 26 period moving average and continue the down move. You see how it did it over there back in the beginning of 2022. You see where how it did it here uh, the, in the summer. It just rotated, uh, uh, rolled over, I'm sorry, ro rolled over to the downside. And you can see the back moving average of the chart of the. Um, of the circular treasury bond continuous contract. It touched and then with a doji camera pull back. I'll explain why there is a chance that we're going to have some kind of news happening a pretty couple of weeks bounce in yields, uh, in the bonds yields come down. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back and we're looking at bonds. And the reason why I'm looking at bonds is because with everything that's been said, everything that's been done, everything that the Fed can talk about today, there are signs, and they're just signs, really. It doesn't mean to say it's going to happen. Oh, I don't know where that came from. Let me just get rid of it right here. Um, this is the TLT. I'm going to go back to the uh, U.S. Treasury bonds in a moment. Let me just do this. So in the uh, TLT, you've got a trend line that comes from this previous peak of 143.62 back in the, uh, this is the monthly chart, uh, July of 2016. I, I don't think, I'm not sure that's the same price, but look at this. So this is a line, you see this line right here. This is, I, I take it from a particular point and it's called the Chef Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. On the way up, it's a target resistance line. On the way down, it's a target support line. Let me just make this uh, red, then make it dashed, because I always keep got to have everything consistent. And you can see we're right there. You see the way you've got this W formation potential, W formation in the uh, MACD. See the way stochastic's a little bit higher than it was at that previous low in the TLT. This is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF, iShares. Uh, 91.85 was the low back in October of 2022, and yet the stochastic was way down there in the, um, I'll tell you right now where it was, it was at 5%, 5%, but now it's at 17%, so there's a slight divergence in the technicals, and the MACD, you can see, it's a little bit better. The aperture right here is a little bit better than it was over there. And the night and the uh, the histogram has started to improve tremendously, although it has pulled back, but nothing like it had been. Uh, the nine period moving average is still way underneath the 14 period. Now let's just compare that to the US. This is the this is the 30 year Treasury T bond continuous contract. And you can see 
the story here is that that particular low in uh, November of 2022, the MACD was very weak. The stochastic was very weak. And at this particular point, the 30-year, the technicals are not anywhere close as good as the TLT technicals are on the monthly chart. That's the 20-year. They are bonds with a longer duration, but they call it a 20-year uh, TLT. is a 20-year um, T, that, that's the bond ETF or fund. But wait a minute. There's a chance that on a shorter term, let me get out of this, on a shorter term basis, you see the acceleration that you've got to the downside here in the weekly. You'll see it a little bit better with the notation in the, in the TLT. Uh, in the, uh, here it goes. In the TLT itself. Chapman Wave notation leg E to the downside. MACD is way above where it was at the previous low of 91.85 at this particular point. Uh, 91.85, I should have said when, in October of 2022. Remember, that's when we got that fantastic buy signal with the Dow. We still hold that core position um, and, and other areas. We got good good entry points. Now what we're looking at is, see the speed with which we we, we keep, now we've made it just one higher high, that's so a higher low for a leg A. goes to an A minus in the week chart because it's lower now. But there's a good chance that just in this area now, it's an area of time. It might be on price. That I can't say just yet. I have to really wait for the closing price on Friday at 4 o'clock. But there's a chance that we have a bounce, and that bounce over a two- to three-week period, if it comes in by early next week, could take us back into the 89 to 91 area. Just a kind of a relief rally because that will give us time to assess with the TBT, it's on the upside, which finally broke above to give you a leg D in the weekly chart based on the Chapman Wave inside, uh, sorry, the Chapman Wave instant restart right here from peak D. Uh, three bars later, we're making a leg E. That really gives you an alternate count. That becomes E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and yeah, you get your D. You're always looking for a peak D in a buy mode. Um, in the Chapman Wave methodology, and then other things can happen. Yeah, you got your D. You went to an E, pulls back. Is this a brand new gray A? And now you've got F slash B. Those who do Chapman Wave methodology know that you could recycle, sort of hold your move to the upside. Or is the MACD just barely crossing positive, much lower than it was before, with the stochastic down at 70%, whereas before it was holding beautifully up in the 80 and 85% area, with the unbalanced volume, the blue line, the only signal that ever gives me, that's what gave us that exact high, one of the indicators that gave us that exact high, um, August the 1st sell signal, uh, well, we, where we weren't short, um, the Dow. That's for the more intermediate term, August 1st, now it's already uh, halfway through October. Um, so I'm saying to you, just let's be careful here. I know now you're getting stories about people talking about the crash in bonds with yields skyrocketing. I think it's a process, and I think this is part of the process, and the process is saying um, we're getting closer to some kind of, if you're looking at the Weekly chart at 89% and flat, that stochastic says you could have a decent bounce in the um, in the TLT. But this TBT is holding fantastically steady with all the technicals very strong. On balance volume is overbought. But that stochastic at 89% says any pullback, as long as it's holding in the 80%, 83% area, is going to be just a temporary pullback. And that monthly chart is still kind of breaking out. So I'm saying... I'm looking at this and thinking, it could be a relief rally, and that should probably give us a little bit of a bounce in the general market. So we've got to look at this in two ways. One is, uh-oh, the way the market's acting, um, any anything can happen. Um, that weekly chart with that nine-period moving average, negative like this gives me, it's really a heads up because if the QQQ slide into Friday's close, that nine-period moving average on the weekly chart is going to be very close to turning down. So far, it's holding steady, and that's important. Okay, so that takes me to a bunch of other things I wanted to do. I, what I wanted to show you is that the way I'm looking at bonds right now, looking out, I think yields are going higher. Shorter term, I think we're very close 
to some kind of a rebound. Now, you could crash and rebound. That's not a, that, that's not a rebound because that's just as first of all you have to look at it as a very serious decline uh, in the um, in the in the bonds. All right. So crude oil holding steady, beta PD in the weekly chart coming up to Friday, and as long as it's holding like this, it says just at this particular point, the acceleration to the upside in crude oil has kind of been um, it's mellowed out. It's kind of stopping a little bit. It's the same thing in the heating oil. See almost the same chart. Look at this. You've got your declining trend line right here. Let me just draw this in for you. There it is. So you've got your falling axe formation. Well, it looks like an axe. It's got a long handle, and then you've got lower highs and much lower lows. And try as finally it turns around, tries to find some support to get back to that trend line. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down about 50 points. Dow's about I can take Dishon's Hour. See you in a moment. There's a lot to do. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So I got an apology to make to Jason. Jason, on Tuesday, early in the morning, you sent me a note saying VS18 starting to look good. It's a satellite uh, communications company, uh, Viasat Inc., um, what do I think? Well, at least you might want to start a position. And I really have to apologize because I would have done my usual. This is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. So I would have said something about um, 
at this particular point, it must have been at about, I'm guessing it must have been at about 18.30, maybe, what's it, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Was it Monday that you sent me? To? Yeah, I, I missed whatever it is, and I missed doing it yesterday, which was Wednesday. So it must have been Tuesday. So I would have said, uh, in this particular area, I've seen a number of communi communication stocks, especially the very low price ones in the single digits, and I've been very wary about uh, for subscribers saying, hey, let, let's have a, a quick trade, what we call um, a, um, these are screamers that are under $10. $10 and if you get them just right, you can run them up for a good few percentage points in minutes. And then you take some gains and you try to keep the core position. And if it holds through the close, you now got you. Yeah, we had that with the UEC was one of those, uh, which we still have, actually. So uh, within that particular context, I would have said to you start the position, but it has to be a small position and maybe a split position. And I'm almost sure I would have said just start the position and then on a pullback, and I don't know what it would have been, it probably been about a point and, a, and about a dollar ten. I would have said you can add the second position with a very tight stop and you would have missed one and it ran all the way to the 22s. And uh, today it pulled back to 20.50 and the highest 21. Uh, 74 and is trading at 21.47, up three cents. Now, th we had a, we had, uh, I might remember VSAT, yeah. So we had Opta doing the same thing, uh, uh, OPTK. Oh, now, why did I even say that if I can't remember the, what it was? Opt, Opta, that was that it has health ingredients, OPKT. Oh, no, I'm forgetting what it is. Anyway, someone had mentioned it the other day, and it had a big spike up. And I, I was thinking that VSAT, VSAT could, in fact, have the same kind of chart pattern where it has this one-day pop and then gives it up. But at the same time, it's in an area that I've been looking at that has been showing quite a bit of interest. But if I look at that monthly chart, that arch formation that took out the left side low, and it's now three months below the low that was made back in January or so of 2020, I, I would have had a lot of hesitancy. So I would have said to you, start a position. Well, that position would still be in because it's holding very well. So I don't know what you did and you didn't contact me again. You must have been disappointed I didn't do it because I did do the show, uh, two shows, in fact, and I haven't spoken about it. But this is exactly what I'm saying. In this particular environment, with the market so jittery, when you've got a price movement that goes to just a beautiful doji candle, tiny indecisive candle right at a low, up in the words, you don't know it's a low, but going to lows, and then all of a sudden it stalls and it goes to 15.02, uh, and the next day a beautiful green candle closes above it, and the following day a green candle then pulls back just modestly for a gray peak A, and now it's got a gray, it should have been a gray peak B, but I have to make it blue. That means this has the potential to go to a C and a D, with a MACD strong, the stochastic flat at 92%, on balance volume is not even close to being overbought, um, the nine has just flipped to positive. Yesterday it flipped and today it's holding. I like it. I'm so sorry I never got to it and I'm maybe you've already got into it. I hope you have. But I'm looking at it and saying, um, even now, the question is, what would I do? And I have to say to you, now the risk reward, because it's about a point and a quarter higher than I, I would have been talking to you, is maybe even more actually. Could have been. Oh, no, it's quite a bit. So it's two points. So now the risk reward is something completely different. But I do like it in this environment when you've got something acting so well. So this is what I'm going to say to you. Just start a little, a small position at 21.54. This one is different altogether. This is saying it looks ready for a pullback. If the market really tanks, this thing is going to have to, it'll be pull, pulling back. But what if it holds steady? It, the, the idea is that it's got a target on the left side of this double top at 24.94 and then 24.84 um, back in the in September, mid September, before it started the big tumble down with six sessions of ugly red candles and gaps down. It's getting towards getting to the top of that. 
So I'm saying that that would be the target. Um, I, I don't want to draw in the cup formation and everything just yet. I just want to say, let's see where it closes on the day. I will draw it in. Why not? It's technical. Technical Thursday, not technical Friday. So you get yourself. This is the pattern that I'm looking at. It's a lopsided cup formation. Um, but normally what I do is I try to find what I, th I think visually. If it doesn't look like you could do it, no. If it looks like it's going to take a shorter time period to get back to that high, they're making this the midpoint, the plumb line right here says, okay, let's see what happens. It's a little bit lopsided, but let's just see what would happen. And I'll draw this in and I'll say, you know what? It's going to have to do it with speed. It's got until until Monday, until the 23rd, to get to the left side high of 24.84 to 94. And I'm just going to keep it in here. Normally, I'd be a little bit more conservative. But I'm saying this is the aggressive part of it that could work out. And I'd go from here to here. That's the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. It hasn't even got there. So this is kind of what I would do. But I prefer to go out a little bit longer. I'd probably take that peak and move it to the right and say by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, then the, then the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line will be maybe uh, 20 23, 10, something like that. So I like it. Now, it's all contingent, and it's the same as today. I'm going to give you the parameters if there's an upside spike suddenly this late this afternoon. But it's all contingent on the support of uh, 1950, which is the green nine-period exponential moving average. I'm going to say it's really not that. I'm going to go to the low of three days ago, and that's the low of 1985. So the whole 1990 to 1980 area is really key support on the very short term. Hope that helps you. All right, next question came in. Could I look? Oh, um, Eli Lilly, something mentioned in the den. You remember I was saying I'd be a little cautious, cautious at this level. Where the heck is it? Oh, my, look at that. So what I was looking at, I said, I'm not going to call this a leg A or peak A. I'm calling it an E because it's an extension of that peak D over there. And the way it's acting in the single leg move up looks like it's news related and it's in a leg D in the weekly chart and a GCSC. This is Eli Lilly. And I said, there's a lot weight, uh, weighing, there's a little joke there, uh, on, the, um, on this news related spiral to the upside. So, going from the 20 area to the 620, above 620. And I'm a little cautious about that. Risk reward is very high. Well, now today, for some reason, it's down 23 points at 584. Yeah, this is that category. I overboard. It's just it needs a rest and it's getting it. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I apologize for not doing this earlier. I had it all ready to do, but there was just so much going on. I, and I'm instead of my usual plethora of monitors that I'm looking at, I've just got this one laptop right here, and I have to juggle all different things. And I'm going to my desktop back home, uh, so I the office computer. So I have to really do a lot of juggling. But I had a little. There was a little Doji candle. See this 200 period moving average in the 10 minute E mini. I'll get to PLTR. was a question if I could look at it. So look at this. Let me get rid of these old fib numbers. I always have fib numbers lying there, and then I'd get rid of them because it gets a little messy. But uh, all right. So yes, your arch formation. I actually go, I do have fibs right here. Um, so look, it went to a peak. You see the 200 period moving average, and oh, that's the other reason I never got to it. Um, this is the furthest away from the 200 period moving average the TLT has been in a long time. Look at how far the price has been in the 10 minute chart. I wonder if I can just squeeze it here. Let me squeeze, 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 and go back. Yeah. See, so remember this cluster formation and then the retest uh, back uh, over here. This is on the 18th. What is it? Yeah, that was yesterday. Oh, I wasn't. Yeah, uh, only in the morning I was around. But you see the way it, it held the 200 period moving average like a magnet. How many times did I keep saying, watch the 200 period moving average? It's like a magnet over and under, over and under, arch, uh, like a sine wave, arch, cup, arch, cup. Anyway, finally pulls away, then it has to retest it. It retests it and can't break out at about 10 o'clock when I was doing my show yesterday. And then it pulled away. Look at this. It pulled away. It got very far away from the 200 period moving average, and then it tried to draw itself in, and it couldn't. But the, the 200 period moving average was in a, the downtrend. The, the tide was declining. So the tide is going down, and you can see the price gets closer, but it couldn't do it. And then finally, uh, at 4 o'clock this morning, a.m. Eastern time starts to peak. A, B, C, D. It gets close, pulls back. It makes this uh, confirmation it has a, 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 a retracement to this. I'm using a different fib at this particular point. If I remember correctly, it was a 50%. And then it makes the confirmation and goes back and it retests. Now let me expand this. And this is all contingent about, upon pre-Fed talk, which will be at noon in about an hour and a half or whatever that is, uh, an hour and, and a quarter. So it's pulled away, and now once again, it's pulled away quite a bit away from there, and it should have some kind of a retest to try to get to the 438. It's at 4329 right now. It should try to, I don't know what that phone is. I don't know what's going to happen when it gets on. <laughs> Nobody's going to answer. And that should try to get to the pink line, 4336, later in the day, maybe even 4338, which is the 14 period moving average, because as you get closer to Fed speak, it kind of narrows. If it's up, it comes down. If it's down, it goes up. Just while it's waiting, we'll see what happens. It's off the Fed speak this afternoon that's going to be so important. Do you see how far away it is from the 200 period moving average after this peak F? Now, another reason why I was looking at it and saying, hey, I think this is that pattern that I call 
the double, you know, camels, some camels have one hump, some camels have two humps. As a, as a kind of a joke, I've always said, this is the double hump. It's like an M-shaped pattern in the MACD. This is the one that we had when we were looking at the cell signal in uh, October of 2007 in the S&P in the summer. And then it still had that big rally into the October high where we got that beautiful doji can, that, that sorry, Chapman Wave Roman red, Roman candle. And that I said, look, this should only go to one or two peaks and then we should turn down sharply because it's got this M-shaped pattern. Well, that's what we had here. And look how it pulled back. So now it's getting ready for at least some kind of amelioration of the tension. So let me, while I'm talking about it, because I, I will forget it, I'm sorry, I'm still going to go to PLTR in a moment. Um, yeah, so this is what I was looking at. Here's the monthly chart. And look at the distance. So TLT. Uh, was that it? No, it was not. It was this one right here. Sorry. I know it's this chart, but I'm going to get to it. Uh, there it is. So this is the TLT. Look at the distance between the 200 period moving average and that whole cluster formation where it kept touching the 200 period moving average and then got repelled back in March and April of this year. Now this is the furthest, furthest way it's been. So I'm anticipating that's another reason why the magnet line up there should say just have a bounce. Just reward me at least for a little while to say you get, you're you trying to get back to me because you're not getting back to me for a long time. But at least have a bounce. And then, all right. That's that's The reason is if you do a measured move from that 200 period moving average to where the TLT is right now at 83.94, you'll see the same thing happening here in the bonds. See where that is? Way up there at 124. And the price right now is at 108. I mean, this is, these are bonds. They're yeah, going from the 130s to the 108. This is not a stock. Bonds used to be a security factor, well, for 40 years. Now it's changed. So I, that's what I'm saying. All right. So now we're going to go to PLTR, Palatier Technology, I believe is the name. Let's just have a look here. It comes Palatier, Palantir. Technologies Inc. develops data fusion platforms. Not quite sure. It's probably self explanatory data fusion, right? Um, so here we go. There's your peak D. What do we anticipate in the buy mode? A buy signal to a buy mode that goes to at least a peak D, and then other things can happen. Remember, the Chapman wave is the waveform that never sleeps. So everything, every single one of these troughs and peaks gets alphabetized and has an implication on the way up it, it's measuring the status and the, the the power of each leg so it's a it's a measure it's a tool of measurement as well as um as a notation that says four higher peaks is your objective in a buy mode it can go higher but four is the least that you should get so in this particular instance the bank is good stochastics now at 75 percent pulling back on balance of volume is a tad overboard but it's still in a very strong area back is very good nines way over the 14 i like it i like it a lot and palantir is something when the market finally turns around we'll see if palantir um can it was a leader in a sector back in 20 20 into 2021 January of 2021 when it went from an IPO in the nines to 45 round number high and then it's just been down 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 525 527 was the low yes it's in a, it's in whatever it's doing I believe it's going to be a very good area because it's holding so well I like it now I don't know if you wanted to add I didn't quite get that as I'm saying I'm, I'm juggling a number of windows all on one laptop let me just have a question um, I'll get to it right here. Okay, the question is, oh, could I just look at it? Yeah, so uh, that's, well, that's all I'm doing. And a uh, question about McDonald's, I'll do that as well. So the question for Palantir is, yes, it's doing. I know that you're all along and I think you should hold it as long as you can because I would be messing with it. In other words, I would not be jumping in and out of this. This is because in your position, you like to get core uh, longs or his shorts, the same sort of thing, and you like to hold them. And you can see peak B in the monthly chart, it should go to it at some point. But it does say that 13 at four points is a lot of percentage points. 
but four point action is major support between 14 and 30, 13. I like it as it's standing right now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Education South. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, just as we wrap up, McDonald's, McDonald's trading up to three at 59. It come off a low that was made about three weeks ago. That was at, on the 6th of October at 245.73, is trading at 259.12. Now, the, the, these defensive stocks, that the whole area of you know, General Mills, um, XLP is really the uh, sector that has it. That's the ETF. Um, they've been hammered. I mean, you're talking about a stock that was at uh, – just about 300, did 298 was that? Let me just check what the high was. I forgot to type it in there. Yeah, 299.35, just missed 300 by uh, 65 cents. Uh, so 299 in the week of 23rd, 21st of July, and it tumbles down to the 240s. So it's oversold and it's having a decent bounce. I like it. I like it in this environment. It's saying that the defensive stocks are coming back again. But cheated is only a trade. And if you are long, um, I would say your stop has to be, it's at 259, 252 
and I'd, I'd have it as a training stop if it's able to get to the 263 uh, level. I'd actually take a little bit off as part of money management, and then I think it should go sideways. So that's that. The other question I had was um, DKNG. This is uh, uh, DraftKings. Yeah, I said to hold DraftKings. We've been wanting it for a while, and I said, okay, now now we're going to have to hold off completely because it's failed at a peak C, and it could fail at a peak C again in the daily. And if you got this is an inverted Chapman wave falling X formation plus it's an arch, it's it looks to me like it now wants to take out the left side low. I'm watching it very closely. I think on the term it's going to be a really good buy, but where is the question? It must hold 27.20 uh, on a closing basis. So as we stand right now, for the Dow suddenly turns around and goes to a plus 40 by 3.30 this afternoon. That's a good sign. But if it starts to accelerate down, just be real careful. But watch those bonds because bonds, I think, are getting real close to some kind of support. Thank you for Steve Rhodes. Have a great day. Check.